G'day folks, the team at Deeper have released a brand new portable, castable, smart sonar. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now for those of you that are new to Deeper, Deeper produce portable, castable fish finders. Smart sonar they call them. You cast them out, then they send a Wi-Fi signal back to your phone. The ball that is Deeper is the transducer, and your mobile phone becomes the fish finder screen. Now for today's video, I've actually got mine sitting up here at high height. I've got my phone plugged in, or plugged in, but set up on a tripod. You don't need to do that when you use this fish finder. It just makes it easier for me to record. Right, I'm all set up. Normally with these types of videos, I like to get the, uh, open the, open, do the unboxing, get it out of the box, show you what's in the box, show you how to set it up, walk you through it and all that stuff. But I've got plenty of videos where I've done that. So in this video, I'm just introducing you to the new Deeper Pro Plus 2 fish finder and we're going to see how it performs. Right now I've just been through the settings and I've got it all set up ready to go and I'll show you what I'm choosing. Up the top here we've got fishing modes. I've got it in standard mode. We then have shore based mode which creates a bathymetric map, boat mode and ice fishing mode. Underneath we have sonar display, raw or basic. Raw is best, it gives you more detail. Basic just uh, is as it says basic. Beam angle, I've got it on seven degrees, nice and tight for shallow water. This isn't, I don't expect this to be more than about two meters deep out here. The sensitivity I've got down low at the moment, I've got it set on 15%. Sensitivity is something you can adjust as you need to. In turbulent water with lots of current, you really want it low because every single air bubble in the water will show up on the fish finder. I've got fish icons turned off. I can turn them on and that'll show me where the fish are. But unfortunately, fish finders generally show you where the fish are when there's stumps and stuff. And I prefer to have them off and use the finder to show me where the stumps and the structure is. So, and you can change the fish icons, but I'm going to turn them off anyway. Actually, I'll turn it back on for a second and show you what else you can do. Down here, you can have where it says fish depth. That'll say, you know, one meter from the bottom or one meter from the top. And it'll just, uh, or it'll just show you where they are. And you can have fish alarms turned on so that it beeps every time it sees a fish. Those functions are great if you're in a waterway, say a big lake chasing trout, where the trout swim around in the middle. Or even a waterway with carp, where the carp swim out in the ocean. But most of the fish in here, the Murray Cod and the Yellow Belly and whatnot, will be sitting up under the snags. And it'll show a fish icon for the snags. So... I'm just going to turn fish icons off completely. Color palette. I can go from uh, day to uh, from normal to day to night mode. I think it must be in a bit shallow. There we go. Once it gets in too shallow, it causes issues. So as soon as I put that out a bit deeper, it starts working. So that's night mode. Then we've got day mode. And then we've got normal mode. Day mode will be best for me today because it's the middle of the day. So they're my settings. Oh, and I've got night fishing turned off. You can get a night fishing cap for these, which is clear or transparent. And the little light inside flashes so that you can see where it is after dark. Now, I'm not expecting that to be any more than probably a couple of metres at most out here. Give it a second. Now, that's going to be sending a signal back from that transducer back to my phone. And there we are. We're in 1.6 metres. So there's 1.6 metres depth. Now, for the sort of fishing I'm going to be doing today, I'm, going to, I'm actually fishing here after I finish filming. For the sort of fishing that I'm doing today, I want to find where the structure is, where the drop-offs are and where the logs are, so that I don't cast on top of them and get snagged, but I know to cast close to them. Where that is there now, there's not much underneath. 1.6... Now, as I reel it in, you'll see the bottom becomes a little bit rough. That could be just the fish finder bouncing up and down a little bit. But it is getting shallower. 1.4, 1.3. Not much structure showing up. What I can do is I can turn my sensitivity up a little bit. Turn it up to 60%. It probably won't make too much difference because the water is so calm. Right. Looks like there should be some snags just there. Let's see if I can cast down that way. Now can, it takes a couple of seconds for the signal to come through, and here it is. So this there, there's 1.5 metres just there, which is about 4 or 5 feet deep just there. And there's something on the bottom, look. What happens if I turn my sensitivity down? Do we still see that? Just. What if I turn it right up? It shows it big and bold. A lot of the sensitivity really high and see what happens, see what it looks like. So look at that little thing just next to that snag. That could be a fish. You see that little dot just above that snag? So there could be a fish just out there near that snag. You know, I'll reel that in. See if it picks up anything else. 
So I know for a fact that there's a snag out in front of that snag. In all truth, all the truthness, that's probably a root ball, and that's probably the rest of the tree that I picked up, the uh, main trunk. Probably if I cast way out further, I'd get a lot more snags. You can see a few specks showing up underneath there. Now, that could be a little fish just sort of off the bottom there. What do I go up this way? What have we got out there? 1.6, 1.7, so it's deeper over there. This is a weir pool. The original Broken Creek runs through here, so I dare say that's gone into the old creek bed, whereas over here is up on the bank. There's not much structure down there, is there? Now, there's something showing up just there now. I'm guessing it's probably a stick or something that's attached to that log that's going out there. Alright, what else can we find? Might have been 1.5 metres just there. Just there doesn't look like a bad spot to fish. I might go up there on the, up the bank in a second and uh, have a bit of a pan around up there with my fish finder. Should start seeing something here because I'm going over a branch. There it is. Just starting to come up there now. Look, you can see the structure. You can see the branch there and it's just showing up here on the fish finder. And there's a bit of structure just under there too. So there's a few snags there. We already knew that because we can see them. I'm going to walk up there a little bit and have a look. All right, now let's see what we can find here. Oh, shit, I nearly hit that tree. Look at that, that's probably a good 25 metres. And it's sending the Wi-Fi signal back, no problem at all. And it is 1.6 metres. Bit harder to see the fish finder here because I'm in full sun. A little bit of stumping on the bottom over there now. Something coming up under there. Well, I can actually see the stick. <laughs> I saw it on the fish finder before I saw it with my eyes. Alright, so now I've moved up here to a spot that's just upstream a bit and I should be able to see quite a bit of structure here. If I don't get snagged on that branch. Alright. Try and place that in the shade a bit more. Right, so over there there's 1.8 metres and quite a lot of stuff on the bottom as you can see there. Yes, look at all those now, it's just clear. It's just come out into the clear now. But I can see snags, logs just under the water there, so I suspect that I'll see more again shortly. Yes, look at all the snags there. Let's have a blind cast here, out in the open where I know there's no snow, but I don't know whether there's any snags or not. See what's out there. Oh, what depth have we got? 1.6 metres way over there, and quite a clear bottom. Look at that, there's no snags at all coming through that big open bit. Nothing. Now there's something showing up there now, look at that. Just in the middle of nowhere there's a bit of junk showing up on the bottom there. So there's a snag there, that'd be a good spot to put a bait. Now I've come to a different part of the creek to film my final thoughts on this because there's a few people turned up and started fishing right beside me so I've moved. 
the Deeper Pro Plus 2. What do I think of it? It's great. I love it. But it's not a $4,000 fish finder. It's not a $4,000 state-of-the-art live target building maps, building GPS, whiz-bang fish finder. If you want one of them, you've got to spend $4,000 and get one. It's a $369 castable, compact, portable, practical fish finder. It's very, very good. It's $369, and the Deeper Chert Plus 2, the, uh, the, the flagship from Deeper, that's, th that's $449, so that's $80 dearer. Personally, I would save up an extra $80 and buy the Chert Plus 2. I just think the Chirp Sonar technology is much clearer and much crisper than what the Pro Plus 2 is. In saying that, this is still a very, very capable product, and it's very good at what it does. It does the job very well. Uh, now, Deeper, with their new products, they can't offer a discount. So my discount code, Robbie10, won't work if you buy one of these at the Deeper store until later this year. I think it's about two months. When they first launch a new product, I won't mark them down or discount them for a couple of months. And that's like any other product in the world. So if you buy it now, it's $369 and I can't get you a discount. Sorry. My discount code, Robbie10, does work on all the other products, including the Deeper Chirp Plus 2. So if you were to go and buy the Deeper Chirp Plus 2 for $440 and save, you know, $45, well, you're essentially only going to be paying $40 more to get the Chirp Plus 2 than you are this one. But the discount code will work on this. So if you had to choose between this and the Chirp Plus, it all comes down to the budget. Chirp Plus 2 is a little bit better quality, but the Pro Plus 2 still does a very good job.